Yeah. So thanks very much for joining us today. Um, my name is Carrie Court and I'm the founder of a charity called Sussex Green Living. We provide environmental education and awareness through lots of different initiatives. I'm going to share with you so you can see some of the work that we do. We've got many volunteers who actually work with us to uh, provide environmental outreach initiatives. I'm not going to go into them in any detail. The only one I'd really or couple that I'd like to um, introduce you to is we throughout uh, the last year we've been running online events um, every single week from March through to August and during that time we set up a youth eco forum uh, it's a group of young people aged 11 to 20 who meet every other week using zoom um, to share their hopes their fears ideas and actions so if you've got any pupils or young people who might like to join that group uh, please get in contact or go on to sussex green living you'll find the youth eco forum um, and then they can join uh, that forum Historically, pre this last year, um, I used to actually go out and deliver um, environmental education, climate education, um, with about 65 schools, mainly within West Sussex, sometimes going over the border. Um, obviously, over the last year, that has not happened. We have actually filmed and provided um, some um, videos for people to be able to join virtually. But um, Nicola is going to highlight at the end of this session, um, we're working together, Nicola, myself, and several other partners, creative arts partners, to uh, run a Bright New Future Roadshow, um, which will also include our Inspiration Eco Station. So we'll tell you more about that at the end. Uh, but I would like to say thank you very much to the South Downs National Park, uh, their COVID fund for actually funding this virtual event today. They've been running a whole series of um, events like this. Nicola ran one recently. Um, and at the end of this session, Nicola is going to tell you about some other sessions that she's running. But this one was funded by the South Downs National Park which many of you will know is a stunning area. It's unique and it's uh, rich in habitat and it's got lots of rare and, and internationally important wildlife species. So if you're anywhere near the South Downs National Park, again, we'll tell you at the end, there's some grants that you can apply for, either for people like Nicola and myself to actually present virtually or to come to your school to carry out some education with your pupils or for you to apply to go um, to get transport grant and to take some of your pupils on a trip into the South Downs National Park. So some great opportunities there we'll highlight at the end. What are we going to do today? So today we need to look at why we need to be wildlife eco warriors, what the solutions are, uh, and then those of you that have got a plastic carton and the materials that I put in the email will be able to have a making session. So this is something that I have done as a CPD session before with teachers. We had quite a lot of fun, but it was in, um, in a room together, which was probably much more fun. Uh, the kids absolutely love this activity. Um, so um, those of the, you that don't have the materials will keep a dialogue going so we'll be able to talk about other things. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, Nicola, before I start, would you would you like to just very briefly introduce yourself? Yep. Hello, everybody. And so to just little I've mainly work that I've done in schools is about my work in the Amazon. I've actually spent 20 years working in the Amazon. So, you know, when when it's time to talk about the forest in the Amazon, then I come in and I can bring artifacts from the Amazon and talk about my work where I went from the headwaters in Ecuador all the way down the Amazon River to Brazil. And so over the 20 years, I've done a lot of kind of community and environmental work in the Amazon. So that's one side of it. 
but you know my current love and passion is biomimicry which I'll speak more about at the end which is looking and understanding you know the incredible intelligence in nature and what we can learn from it and so all classes you know can bring more of this um, into education and I mean once once you start looking into it I mean it's absolutely fascinating and children absolutely love it especially kind of teenage groups and it gives them real hope to see what the future can look like when it's based on working and mimicking you know natural intelligence so that's a little bit about myself thanks very much so we'll go uh, yeah into more detail at the end but at this point i'd like to actually highlight why why we need to be eco warriors and your role in this activity which is absolutely totally crucial so Although COVID has taken over our lives and it's taken over the media over the last year, the climate and ecological crisis has not gone away. Haven't heard much about it. As I'm sure you're aware, one of the main activities that people have actually um, done over the last year is gone out walking, walking in the countryside, walking with their families, walking with their children. Lots of people that might not have done this before have found great peace um, and great relaxation and, and it's reduced their stress and families have come together and more and more people have bought dogs. I hope they keep them and they look after them. More and more people have worked from home. Lots of people have taken to gardening, um, to keeping chickens. Um, so there's been, although it's a dreadful year, truly dreadful, there's been lots of good things environmentally that have been going on. So um, all of these good things, we now need to work out how we can capture this mutual aid and this localism that has taken place over the last year and how we can build back much better. Now, this is where you guys come in. I'm sure you know, but you are up there. Um, sorry, assuming you're teachers, <laughs> um, some of you are, um, you are up there in the top 10 respected professions within the world um, and you have got such an important role to play within um, the uh, the climate action that we really seriously need to take now now before i actually move on and we look at what's the link between waste and what's the link between climate change and wildlife and growing um, i'd like to just run a very very quick survey a uh, quick poll, um, two seconds, let me pop it up, um, just to find out, so we know who we're talking to, launch the poll, here we go. Would you mind completing? There's a few questions there, um, just three questions there, just to try and find out um, who we've got. So is your school within uh, the, uh, the South Downs National Park or another national park? Um, can you all see that survey? You can see it, Nicola? Yes, but it's not allowing me to click on it. Oh, isn't it? No. Oh, OK. Uh, oh, oh, that's strange, isn't it? I can click on it. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, other people that seem I've to got be it up as well. Oh, oh, can you? oh, I don't know why you can't, Nicola. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> first. You're not allowed to vote. <laughs> oh, OK. There we are. We didn't want your vote anyway. <laughs> Um, so I just really wanted to find out because I know the South Downs National Park have actually sent out um, details of these CPD workshops. Um, so if I end, oh, I should have told you about that, shouldn't I really? Share the results. Let's share them so we can swiftly move on. So they've sent it out through, uh, yeah, other national parks. So there are some of you within the South Downs National Park. The vast majority, yep, yeah, are in West Sussex and some other parts of the UK. Oh, a few from another country. Interesting. Please do share. Those from further afield, please do share in the chat where you're from. And hopefully at the end, we'll have an opportunity to dialogue a little more. And I was just interested to find out whether any of you were... Sorry, yeah, I've stopped the poll so that we could move on. So, uh, Wendy, you won't be able to submit um, your vote now, but um, or your poll. So I wanted to find out if any of you are South Downs National Park ambassador schools. 
Um, I think if Malcolm's here, he's hoping to become one. Um, but that's interesting. Many of you, uh, so 70% are green flag or eco schools. 70% got forest schools. That's really, really encouraging. Brilliant. Um, and I just wanted to find out yet yeah, how you heard about the event. So um, without further ado, let me go back into share mode. So, yeah, you have got such a responsible job. You have no idea how important your eco clubs, uh, your eco activities within your schools are. Um, as you know, children, uh, certainly primary school children, absolutely love being outside. They love eco activities. Um, so the more time we can spend with them outside with your lessons, um, certainly the better. Um, there's been lots and lots of research over the last year about the mental and physical benefits of spending time in nature. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna move on, hopefully from my computer, there we go. Now, what's the connection with climate change and um, all the waste that we're correct creating and our wildlife eco our gardens and, and being more eco in relation to our gardens. Well, our waste resources are shipped all over the world. Um, our plastic, the plastic containers that many of you have got that we're going to be using to make a, um, a bird, a magical bird, um, those until recently um, were actually shipped to be recycled in places like China. They probably originated in China. So they were probably made in China, shipped and transported by lorry using fossil fuel um, to the UK, 10,000 miles, used once and then actually um, sent back to China to be recycled. So that's a big carbon footprint. Actually, I'm going to just stop sharing because I wanted to show you one, one way, um, just let someone else in. Um, so yeah, these plastic cartons, all that shipping um, is involved with them, but there are other alternatives. Um, tetra, tetra packs, these have to be recycled, but tetra packs um, with perhaps oat milk would be another really, really good and much more environmentally friendly option than cow's milk. Um, or I uh, don't know how many of you use the milkman, but uh, if you can actually use the milkman, these are just ideas just before we get started with showing you wonderful ideas for um, the wildlife garden. But a milk bottle, instead of in our family, um, 80 plastic mark cartons like this a year shipped backwards and forwards um, to places like China, we now buy our milk from the milkman. Um, so each week we have about six milk bottles delivered. Um, we use the milk and we send it back uh, to um, Dairy Crest as it happens. Um, and they get sterilized and sent back again. So those are just some ways of reducing our carbon footprint, thinking about how we can um, live a more environmentally friendly life really. Um, so I'm going to share with you some fun ideas now for upcycling in the garden. So much, much better than recycling is looking at the materials that we've got around us and thinking about how we can reuse them. Don't know whether you guys want to use the chat. Normally this would be much, much more personal. Um, and we would uh, sit and debate for a little while, certainly with the children, you know, how, how we might use an odd piece of gutter um, for the benefit of wildlife or growing in the garden. Have you got any ideas? How could you use, rather than just dump it, put it in your rubbish bin or take it to the household waste recycling faci facility, how could you use a piece of gutter? Has anyone got any ideas? I'm going to show you some in a minute um, and we're going to look at ways we can use bottles um, and all sorts of things. So has anyone with us today got a plastic bottle um, greenhouse? I know it was, there was a phase um, a little while ago, a few years ago, where lots and lots of schools um, did this as an exercise. They got um, 
children to bring in bottles, plastic bottles, and then they made greenhouses out of these bottles. It's a good exercise for children to learn, you know, different ways and be innovative about how we can use the materials. This example on the right is a uh, little dome, a reading dome within a school. Um, and you might or might not be able to see, but the, it's made with buckled wheels, bicycle wheels. So, you know, yes, maybe that's something that you could build within your school. So it's finding innovative ways to reuse. Now, when we do sessions in schools, um, and indeed, when you're considering perhaps how to use your school grounds, think about vertical growing. Um, so even within a really small garden or on really small um, school grounds, rather than building um, beds in, into the ground, we can, of course, grow up. The pyramid uh, planting stand on the left hand side is using plastic bottles, um, so fairly sizable plastic bottles, cut off, holes in the lids, and then they've planted uh, plants within the bottles. A um, few more examples, so looks lovely, the one on the right, I could see that in your schools. So planting salad produce, um, using bottom left, they created a, like a little bird scarer to keep the birds off the vegetables. Um, and again, some examples of vertical growing in small spaces. Now, here are some examples of using gutters. So we've got a rotation scheme top left. Um, that's again, growing salad produce, um, soil in the gutter. Um, at a slight angle, so that if you start watering the top gutter, any runoff, any spare water can run down and onto the gutter below. Um, ideally, plant these up uh, at slightly staggered intervals, so you've got a good supply and ongoing supply of um, salad produce. I show the, 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 hang, the hanging baskets with tomatoes in them just to highlight that even people with very small gardens or no gardens, just a balcony, you know, we can make an effort, we can grow things in small spaces. I rather like the idea of the uh, strawberries as well. I haven't tried it myself, but in gutters hanging up. So no opportunity for the slugs to actually um, eat the strawberries, always a problem. So more examples of just ways in which we can reuse gutters, reuse materials um, that very often we have lying around. Um, I think these are fun as well. I don't know whether you've got any within your school grounds, but actually using old boots, old Wellington boots. Um, and there are, yeah, certainly I have, I have actually seen photographs with real birds using these boots as bird houses, so rather sweet. I've seen many schools with beautiful, beautiful multicolored displays of uh, floral displays, bee friendly plants preferably um, on their fences with all the odd, odd Wellington boots where wellies have been lost. So get creative. I mean, look at the dog, isn't he cute? Um, uh, the children love getting creative around reuse. Uh, strawberry, mm, strawberries in a welly, hopefully not a smelly welly. <laughs> um, these are potato plants, again, grown in a relatively small space. I'm not sure, I, 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 know, I think, I like the idea of growing flowers in tires and maybe using them as you'll see in a minute um, for little ponds and little water areas in gardens. But I'm not so sure I'm very keen on growing food within tires because as the soil, the tires come into contact with the soil, leakage and things, I'm not so sure. Um, here are some other lovely ideas. So really apart from the paint within your school grounds, uh, beautiful, beautiful, uh, little planting areas that you can create at very, very low cost. Um, and um, yeah, little tiny ponds. So absolutely crucial, as you know, to have water within your school grounds and garden. The one on the left is actually in my garden. Um, our mascot, Sussex Green Living mascot, is Pedro, the red-eyed tree frog. Um, so that was quite a profuse 
uh, display, floral display a couple of years ago. It's got a bit of a mess now. On the right, we've used buckle, buckle tie, buckle wheels again to grow up, um, run of beans, sweet peas, climbing plants. Um, they're great, really, really brilliant um, for growing up. Now the kids always love this one. I don't know that you're gonna like toilets in your school grounds, but um, yeah, toilets being reused. I'm not sure where in the world that was. Um, chicken runs, um, barbecue, bottom left with the beetle. Um, all fun ways of using materials that otherwise would probably just get broken down, toilets broken down for rubble or, or transported fair distances um, and melted down um, to create new metal items. Um, these, does anyone know what they are? Um, Usually, I think it's kind of industrial filter. No, anyone else want to try? Is it a washing machine drum? Yay, you got it. Wash <laughs> Yay. <laughs> washing machine drum, you, or you can use um, a tumble dryer, yeah. Um, so very difficult to get out when your washing machine goes wrong, but do not fear if your washing machine goes wrong because they make absolutely stunning wood burners, planters, um, and the left one is um, ours. We use it for um, a barbecue. So you can put a barbecue grill over the top. It's brilliant for the wok, perfect for the wok. Um, and then after you've cooked, you just take the pan off and then you can use it as a little um, uh, fire, campfire. It's beautiful and it glows, you can imagine, through the holes. So you sit there just looking at these glowing embers through the holes of the washing machine. So. Do not despair when your next washing machine dies. Um, it's a great reuse, fun. Um, oh, and create a and b, &B. I mean, it, you know, that's, that's a plastic um, bottle, just cut off and with bamboo in it. I mean, it costs nothing, does it? Hang it up and give, give a bumblebee or some insects at home. Um, now, I'm going to get I'm going to come back to you in a minute because this feels a bit lonely talking to a computer all on my own. <laughs> um, but uh, before I come back to you, I just wanted to say I know lots of schools are a little bit apprehensive about composting because of vermin. Um, if you've got enough space, it's a really, really good thing to get the kids involved in. They absolutely love it, as you know. And, you know, why are we buying compost um, when we have um, trimmings um, and we have uh, shredded paper and we have, um, you know, waste like fruit, uh, um, apple cores and so on within the school? I know you might have sadly possibly too much food waste to compost, but you do have other materials and children absolutely love it. Um, and then you're actually creating your own compost on site rather than actually having to buy it in and all the costs involved. So, uh, right, I'm going to come back to you because I'm really lonely out here. <laughs> so is anyone still there <laughs> or have they all gone? <laughs> so that was a really, a really fast whip through um, with ideas for... Um, uh, for reuse. Um, do you guys want to turn on your cameras? Because I'm feeling really lonely. Nicola's there. Nicola. <laughs> I don't like being the only person. <laughs> so hopefully that has given you a few more ideas. I mean, normally what I do when I'm running a session, a wildlife eco warrior session in schools, I have a treasure trove, a box, a cardboard box, and it says treasure trove on it. And I pull out a welly and I say to the kids, you know, what are you going to do with this welly? How can we reuse this welly? What can we do with it? And they come up with some great ideas sometimes, really great ideas, sometimes some fun ideas. Um, and, and we just look through the materials and try and work out, you know, what we could actually do with them. Now, can you use your... Um, uh, emoji or to actually say whether how many of you have actually got the materials to make a, um, a magic bird 
how many of you got it? Because I don't want to bore those that haven't got it. Um, yeah, so we've got a few of you, some of you. I'll tell you what we might do. I might change the order slightly. Would anyone have an objection if we uh, run through some of the other information that we have for you um, and then we come on to the, the uh, birds at the end? then those that don't have actually or the materials um, are welcome to stay and talk to us or you can go. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. So, uh, Nicola, would you like to, I, I've got some information about the South Downs National Park grants that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, would you mind, Nicola, telling everybody about um, your courses that are coming up? Um, and the Bright New Future Roadshow, um, and then the grants may well help with some of those activities as well. Right, so um, I have just done one of the talks um, on the South Downs National Park, and actually um, I've had to rebook it because I had to stop it at 206 people that um, booked on and it was called Nature as Teacher and we'll send you the links out again if people are interested. And, um, and I was using within the South Downs National Park some examples of certain beetles and, and kingfishers and, and various species that live within the park and what we've learned from you know, the design of them, their, their strategies, their functions, the systems that they're within. So, um, so Nature as Teacher is one that I did for the South Downs National Park and will be repeated. And I've also another one about what does, what, this is what biodiversity looks like. And this was from, I was actually locked down in the Los Cedros Reserve in Ecuador um, for five months. And it's the most biodiverse place on the planet. And so I wanted to make do a photographic um, journey so that people, you know, we use this word biodiversity a lot, but actually visually, what does it look like? And, um, and so that's another talk that I've got coming up as well as about my work and all the projects that I coordinate in the Amazon. So there's three Eventbrite um, events that I've got coming up myself. And then, as Carrie said, we are working on this Bright Green Futures Roadshow. And the idea of the roadshow is how do we bring environmental education, because both of us are asked so much, can you come here to our parish? Can you come here to our school? You know, can you come and give us environmental education? And so often people immediately think, oh, it's going to be all doom and gloom. Well, I used to be called an environmentalist, but actually my new job title is I'm a solutionist. Don't talk to me about the problems. My work is the solutions. And let's have a look at actually the future we want to see. And this is really important for the kids to know that the future is not going to look like it does now. It's going to look very different. But if we are unable to have a vision of the future, we're not going to get there. And that's why the study of biomimicry is so important. Now, biomimicry is in the curriculum, but it's only just mentioned. And unfortunately, England is very, very behind the times as far as studying it. Now, when I have you know, spoken, especially to teenagers, and they say, well, where do we go on to learn more? we still don't have any universities in the UK that have any more than one module. In Europe and in the States, you can go and study, you know, and, and I'm sure England will kind of get with the programme soon. But, you know, these are some of the ideas I want to bring to the roadshow. So we've got a collective of us. I will be speaking about nature as teacher and biomimicry. We'll be obviously giving the data on this is what, you know, the climate and ecological breakdown means. So we have to have the facts and the data, but more importantly than just focusing on the problems is us to focus on the solutions in a fun and entertaining way, because nobody wants the doom and the gloom. But working with our partners at Moving Sounds, who are great friends, who are so creative in their way of delivering seminars, using theatre, circus, music, arts. 
And so everything from us having a wheel of fortune, which the participants can spin and it will land on something. And then there's an interactive you know, entertainment that we can do to be able to teach about these different subjects. So the idea of the roadshow is that it is a fun way of engaging people, not just with the problems and the solutions, but coming back to, well, what can, what can one person do? because of this feeling of disempowerment that many people feel that there's nothing that one person can actually do. So it's really important that we're able to show that yes, every single one of us is one part in the jigsaw. So that's what the roadshow will be about. It'll, and it's, what's also very important is that it's replicable. What we create in the roadshow can be replicated by other groups throughout the country and beyond to show that here's a model of going to a school or a community, presenting something in a, a fun and educational manner and leaving the people thinking, yeah, okay, I can do something. Let, let's, let's get on with it, you know, rather than waiting for somebody else to fix the problem. So this is the roadshow. We will be creating a film. There'll be a short promo film about the roadshow and also a film that can be used in assemblies. So obviously we're not gonna be able to go to everywhere that wants us to come. So, you know, we are preparing some, you know, video assemblies using our inspiration station, which is an upcycled milk float, which is very exciting that we will be able to use this as, you know, a part of our entertainment. So we'd also be really interested to, you know, to hear from you about this kind of video presentations that we would like to do so if any of you would like to give feedback on that as well as far as you know if you would like to present a video in your assemblies how long would you like it for so you know we're really kind of like looking at that and so it's in process now we've got a brilliant filmmaker from the bbc that wants to help us do it so something that we can also provide education so they're the kind of the two things that, you know, I'm working with Sussex Green Living and with what Carrie of how we roll this out. So that, over to you, Carrie. Thank you. Actually, the last thing, Nicola, which I think this group, because many I think are within West Sussex, is you're actually going to be running some biomimicry walks, aren't you, in different parts, but in particular in your village. Um, do, you, do you want to briefly mention that? Because... So yeah, so in um, Poolborough, we have the Wild Art Trail. So if you haven't looked it up, I mean, it's brilliant. It's um, you with an app, you can walk across the RSPB wetlands. You can actually get there to Poolborough stage, train station. It starts at the train station. So it's a brilliant outing from anywhere. And you walk across the wetlands and there's throughout there, this Wild Art Trail has different species and there's two choices on your app you can either have a look and learn more about nature about the snakes about the reptiles about the bats and the birds or you can go for the fun option which is the giant and it's an incredible augmented reality where you look on your smartphone and it it looks like this giant of floats in front of you and then talks about you know the the nature that's around us and what i'm adding to that is also the part of the biomimicry you know we we look at the part of you know the kingfisher and it's like well yes the kingfisher is how they developed the bullet train in japan to be able to go so fast and go through tunnels without making sonic booms and you know it Without the design of the long beak of the kingfisher, the bullet train wouldn't be as it is now. So, you know, I'm looking at each part of the trail and how we can learn from nature. So I haven't yet booked the dates, but I will be leading, you know, either groups of people that want to go on it or, you know, set up for kind of like open to the public. So if that's something else you're interested, um, we'll send out my contact details for that too. Thanks, that's brilliant. And actually, I've shared the link. Um, so it's just literally just on the edge of the South Downs National Park. Um, I'm going to tell you a little now about the grants that are available. 
um, and then we'll do our, our fun activity. But um, the South Downs National Park have got some grants um, and one of them is a grant for £700 that provides you with um, transportation um, and also some facilitator costs. So for example, should you want to take a group of children out and they were, it was suitable, they could catch the train, you could meet Nicola at Pulborough Station um, and all that, that potentially up to £700 could all be funded through this South Downs National Park grant. Um, and then you could do the art trail and a biomimicry trail with Nicola, for example. But um, let me just share my screen once again. Um, and sorry, this is all horribly one way, this Zoom affair, isn't it? But it's a bit tricky. Um, so I'm just going to share a couple of things with you and then we'll have a go at making a bird. <laughs> um, so there's my computers being a little bit slow. Here we go. Oh, so there's the Inspiration Eco Station. So Nicola was talking about our roadshow. There's just a couple of photos. We literally have bought a milk flow, absolutely insane. And it is being converted at the moment into a display, um, environmental displays. Uh, I think we've got Malcolm from um, Stopham a Primary School with us today. Um, I hope he made it in the end. Um, and we're going to actually take our roadshow out to launch it on the 24th of March at Malcolm's beautiful, lovely school deep within the South Downs National Park. And our float will be looking like an inspiration eco station then. So grants that are available, um, I've shared the URL in, um, in the chat. Um, so yeah, if you go onto the South Downs National Park website, uh, you can you can access um, these grants. So you can actually get up to 75 pounds for a virtual talk using something like Zoom, which Nick or I would be happy to help with. Um, there's also a link in the chat to all the outdoor education providers that have been approved and are on a list um, which you can access through the South Downs National Park education team. Um, you can get 250 pounds um, for a in-school in visit for um, someone like us coming into your school and as I said then there's, there's the um, transport um, for a school trip. Um, these grants are available until the 1st of September so yeah um, that's and I'd, before I do the activity with you I just wanted to share this with you it's a really really good course. Um, I actually sat in on the first of four times one hour um, workshops or um, courses with my 13 year old son. Uh, it was very, very suitable for him. It was really good for me. Um, it's supported by all those organizations that you see at the bottom of the screen here. Um, it's relatively cheap and it's a very concise and a very clear way of learning how to communicate and understand the climate crisis. So um, it literally started last week and they're going to rerun this four week, um, four, one hour a week for four weeks. They're going to rerun the whole program in May. So I would urge you or any of your colleagues or relatives um, to actually look into that. And I'll, I will include it within an email that follows on this session. Right, now the activity that we're gonna do um, is actually stolen off of the Eden Projects website. And so that's how I learned about it. So if you don't have the kit to do it today and you want to leave us at this point, you're most welcome to, or you're most welcome to stay uh, and have a chat. Um, but I will show you how we do this now. So materials that you need, milk carton, scissors, um, some string, hole punch, some permanent marker pens. Um, if you want to make one or children want to make one to hang up indoors, then you can add things like feathers and googly eyes. You could do paper mache on it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, you can make it uh, slightly different for internal use. So this is where we um, need to get our materials. So. I'm just going to come back a second because I really, I feel like I'm I'm, in, I'm talking to myself over here. I can't because I can't see you when I'm doing that. Um, so um, please stay with us. 
Um, but I'm going to stop recording because uh, I don't think we really need the South Downs National Park needs.